Hello everybody, I am Assistant Professor Shweta Dube from CK Thakur College, New Panvel Autonomous and I am going to talk about service marketing. So what exactly is service marketing? We are going to look at a short introduction of the same. Well, if we look at service, it is a form of a product that consists of either activities or any kind of benefits or satisfaction that a person is going to gain out of it. This satisfaction, benefit or performance or satisfaction measure is given for sale it is completely intangible and it does not provide you with any kind of ownership there is no transfer of ownership when we consider a service it can be consumed only at the point of sale and it provides a lot of benefits to the customer now what is the definition given by American Marketing Association for service marketing? According to American Marketing Association, services are activities, benefits or satisfaction which are offered for sale or are provided in connection with the sale of a good. So either it is a completely pure service, for example an airline or it might be something which is associated with a good, for example a mobile phone that you buy and the supplementary service that you gain out of it. Philip Kotler defines service as any act or any performance that one party offers to another party which is considered to be intangible and it does not result in any kind of ownership over that particular performance or act. Its production may be tied to a physical product or it might be completely dissociated with it. What are the characteristics of services now? Services are firstly intangible in nature, which means that you have to experience the service to understand the benefit out of it. The second point is that it is perishable in nature. For example, if you buy an airline ticket, the airline ticket is yours only till the time that the flight has not taken off. So you have to board the flight and only then will you be availing the service or else it is perishable, it has perished and the opportunity has gone by. That service is now going to be for someone else. Coming to the next characteristic of service, it is inseparable. You cannot separate the producer and the consumer. You cannot separate the production and the sale or the distribution of service. That is what we mean by inseparable. Now coming to the next characteristic which is variability and heterogeneous. No service will remain the same for two consumers. Even for a single consumer when you go to a for example let's say if you go to a hotel and if you order a dish the same dish will vary in terms of taste in terms of your experience when you visit it twice. So no two experiences of a service will remain the same and that is what we mean by variability and heterogeneity. Ownership. As already stated, the ownership of a service cannot be associated with a single person. For example, when we consider a physical good, uh, let's say your phone. If you buy a phone, that phone becomes yours. It is completely yours to use. It cannot be given to anybody else. But when it comes to service, your service time period is for a limited uh, phase only it cannot be uh, you will you are not the owner of that service let's say if you go to a movie theater so when you book a ticket the uh, movie ticket seat is reserved for you till the time that the movie is being screened once the screen time or, or the screening of the movie is done that movie ticket is has expired you are no longer the owner of that seat uh, coming to the next characteristic which is quality measurement there are uh, there, there is only a qualitative method of you to measure the essence of a service you cannot measure it in a quantitative ma manner at least uh, not in a very defined sense and the last one is the nature of demand the uh, nature of demand of service is um, is very spontaneous you'll find that the demand and the supply are need to be met you cannot make uh, you cannot make predetermined plans for delivering a service therefore the demand uh, is considered to be very much uh, fluctuating also, uh, the demand of a service is fluctuating in times of uh, peak seasons and dry seasons. Uh, let's say we are talking about a tourist destination. 
so if uh, we are talking about himachal pradesh or a shimla so uh, the service industry in himachal will be at its peak during the summers whereas uh, it would be uh, at a very uh, dry it would be running through a dry phase or on an off season during the um, winter season so therefore we say that the characteristics of service consists of all these and it needs to be combined together to provide a full uh, product to the consumer coming to the classification of service uh, we classify service on the basis of many parameters coming to the first one on the basis of end user if we talk about the end user a uh, service can be availed either by an individual consumer or it can be a business end user or it can be an industrial end user so you can distinguish them on the basis of a single consumer that is individual user you can consider uh, let's say an ad agency which is being uh, uh, which is being recruited by uh, or the services have been availed by an industry so that is business to business end user and there can also be industrial end user for example pest control services for my office so that is an industrial end user coming to the next type of classification we have the degree of tangibility for example we have uh, highly tangible services uh, we have the example of an ola or a uber or any car rental firm uh, these are highly tangible services and uh, over here you will find that the necessity of a product is important your ola or your uber would not be functional if there is no car so you would need or if there is no vehicle you need a vehicle for the product to be implement uh, for the service to be implemented the next classification uh, on the basis of tangibility is of a highly intangible service a highly intangible service uh, will purely be a service for example we have consultancy or a counseling there is no physical entity over here which is associated with the service that is being presented the next classification is on the basis of people based services wherein you have high contact services and you have low contact of services uh, when we talk of high contact service in high contact service you will have uh, where the interaction between the service provider and the consumer is on a day to day basis for example me as a teacher when i am teaching my students so i am interacting with them on a day to day basis i am trying to understand them and i am trying to deliver my service accordingly so this is a high contact service when it comes to low contact service there is a minimal or no interaction between the service provider and the consumer for example the atm services or any kind of vending machines where you do not need any kind of assistance any kind of employees for providing the service so these are the two types when it comes to people based services coming to the next type uh, we have uh, the classification of service on the basis of expertise so there are highly professional services and there are non professional services when we speak of highly professional services we are speaking of people who have expertise in a certain area for example accounting firms law firms these are all agencies which are expertized in the uh, service that they are providing so uh, you need a certain degree of um, education expertise experience in that particular area to provide high professional highly professional services um, now we come to the second type uh, let's say uh, your cobbler or a tailor these are all low uh, uh, low or non professional services wherein the expertise levels are not that high in comparison to what we can uh, assume or expect when it comes to a lawyer service uh, the next classification is on the basis of the orientation of profit of an organization the first kind is a commercial oriented service any kind of private sector organization which is working to gain profit out of whatever service they are providing and the second kind is on the basis of non profit organization wherein we are working purely for providing service for example um, we take the example of being human which is working only for the pure purpose of uh, serving the society and helping the society uh, next ca uh, category of classification is on the basis of the point of service uh, where it is getting delivered uh, we have uh, either the customer home uh, let's say we have uh, the services for example we uh, we are uh, 
uh, the beauty services that we are availing uh, let's say we are talking about a spa or a massage so we in uh, we are ordering the service at home so when it is getting delivered to you at your home when you are getting the massage or a spa service at your own uh, residence we call it as the customer home uh, then we can also have providers retailing so when you go and collect something uh, from a, a retail outlet let's say that is an example of providers retailers uh, or you going to a beauty parlor to uh, get your makeup done is an example of providers retailers so these are all the kinds of classification of services uh, with this we end today's lecture see you again thank you so much for listening